Well guys, the day has finally arrived. I'm officially reviewing a meme. It's just, just all downhill from here. <laughs> So if you've been on social media for the past, like, what is it, like two weeks at this point? The B-movie suddenly became a thing that just popped up out of nowhere. By the time this video comes up, it will likely have disappeared because that is the nature of memes. We don't know where they come from, we don't know where they go, but when they're no longer funny, it just, it's a cliff drop. Harambe was going strong for like a good two to three months, and then all of a sudden just out of nowhere, just like, yeah, I, it's, none of us like this anymore, but people are still making jokes about it. But in spite of that cold open joke, we're actually here to talk about the movie behind the myth. Was B-Movie actually kinda good? I'm gonna say yeah. It was actually pretty decent. Look, I'm not saying this is a masterpiece. I'm not gonna hold this up with like Shrek 2 or a bunch of the Disney movies. But when I say an animated movie with Jerry Seinfeld as a bee who then falls in love with a human and then sues the human race. Does that sound like a good movie to you? It's one of the things you think about, you're like, wow, am I actually gonna watch the bee movie? And then you're watching it and you're like, wow, am I watching the bee movie right now? And you get done watching it and you're like, did I just watch the bee movie? And you think about it and you're like, did I just like the bee movie? What is happening right now? First off, the puns. They're just, there's a bunch of them. They're all over the place. Let's just get that out of the way. Your relationship with puns and kind of simple, cutesy jokes are really gonna make or break this movie for you. It's not all that's in this movie. You're not gonna be groaning the whole time. And it is delightfully self-aware with how it makes its jokes. Like that whole segment where Barry's on like the B version of Larry King and he's like, hey, you know what? They actually have a show just like this. And he like points out all the stupid pop culture reference jokes in there. It's a plot that legitimately has like five Five or six different turns where you're like, okay, now it's gotta start wrapping up. No, wow, that actually injected some life into the story there and took it in another direction. Okay, well clearly after the courtroom thing, that's gonna be it. No, that actually takes a different turn and the characters have to actually come to terms with something. Wow, that's interesting. Just a bunch of different points where you're like, this is better than it should be. <laughs> This is better than it sh should al be allowed to be as the B-movie starring Jerry Seinfeld. He got a pretty decent performance out of all the voice actors in this movie. Jerry Seinfeld did a great job, Renee Zellweger, Matthew Broderick was in this. But let's be real, I was not gonna make this video. This isn't a video that needs to exist. And then the voice of an angel visited me. And you know what it said? Why is yogurt night so difficult? Patrick Warburton in this movie, he made an absolute masterpiece out of his character, and I am not exaggerating. Oh look, Troy's playing this up for giggles and for, oh man, isn't that funny? No, Patrick Warburton in this movie is too good for this movie. I don't use rating scales, but if this is out of 10, Patrick Warburton's like, his, his acting, his voice acting in this movie brings it up, like, two or three points. This goes from being, like, a four out of ten to, like, a seven out of ten because just... His character is just so great in this movie. Yeah, I know, he's supposed to be the bad guy. He tries to kill Barry and whatnot, out of jealousy and all that. But, like, what he brought, he brought this character to life. I'm telling you, watch this movie and imagine anyone else playing this character. Like, imagine Matthew Broderick, who is in this movie, played Ken. First off, your thought is, who is Ken? You'd be nobody. You might as well just cut him out of the movie. He's just excess plot filler, just to make sure you get 90 minutes out of this movie. Ken doesn't need to exist, but Patrick Warburton forced him into existence with his magical voice and just the... Just the passion he brought to this is just nuts. Like, Patrick Warburton's been around the block. He's been crunk, he's been in a bunch of different video games. People like his voice. People like having his voice in stuff. But this is a performance that I haven't seen before. It like reshaped, now I'm starting to get out there a bit, but it kind of like brought a different type of character in terms of like the comedy dynamic. He's both a straight man, but he's over the top. In this world that's just kind of okay with, okay, now bees can talk and now we're gonna do all this. He's the one guy that's like, are you kidding me? This is insane. What is going on? The craziest, most outlandish, loud character is also the straight man. That's something I haven't seen in a lot of movies before. I legitimately want the Rosencrantz and Gillerstern are dead version of this movie. I want a movie that is all about this character and he's just kind of a lovable man-child. He's competitive, he doesn't really listen to his girlfriend as much as he should, and then his girlfriend leaves him for a bee. I want that movie. <laughs> 
I just want this entire movie to be told from this guy's perspective. My question, as in the title, as per usual in the Why Don't You Love series, is why don't you kinda like the B-movie? Why don't you love the idea of Patrick Warburn playing a character, normal average guy, loses his girlfriend to a talking anthropomorphic bee, and then just goes insane? Like, the last bit of the movie there, where he's just like, ah, oh, why is this happening? Like, because the bee is running the flower shop with her and it is also a lawyer? Yes, the bee is a lawyer. And my reaction probably would have been the exact same reaction as his. Like, what is happening right now? I want that movie. I want to see the depths this guy's go to. I mean, really, like, it's basically like a good version of the vamp of Kiss from a Vampire or whatever that Nicolas Cage movie was. Sting from a bee. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. He had a bee sting in the one place that hurt the most. His heart. I want that movie. I want that movie so badly. And you know what? What we get in this movie is pretty good too. If you take nothing else away from this video, I want you to recognize how underrated Patrick Warburton's performance is in this movie. I'm probably repeating myself now. I've probably said this multiple times over the course of me filming this video just this guy brings it like it's it's nuts i don't have much else to say about this movie other than dreamworks or blues whoever made this movie whatever company made this movie make that movie make sting from a bee make ken from this movie make the rosencrantz and gilderstern version of this movie i'll send it in like a script or something like just that would be so amazing especially now that it's gotten kind of this cult following to it like just do it this video completely went off the rails and I don't even care because that's how much I love this performance. So I'm just gonna leave this up to you guys. Please comment below. I'd love to get your opinion on this. If there is a B-movie sequel, what would you want it to be? Pitch me the B-movie sequel. What's the new plot? Who's the new villain? Like, what's, what's the story there? Would you buy a ticket to see Sting from a B? Comment below, tell me all about it. It's just, man, I, this, this video really did go off the rails. But anyway, until next time, God bless and stay saucy.